specializing in spine surgery. She joined Central Indiana Orthopedics in 2003 and practices in their Fishers and Anderson locations. Dr. Tecula, thank you for taking the time to talk with us this morning. Thanks, Lori. Happy to be here. Glad you're here. Before we start talking about work, let's talk about your family a little bit and what you do outside of CIO. Sure. Um, so I'm actually married to one of the practitioners here at Central Indiana Orthopedics, um, Dr. German, who does orthopedic surgery. Um, I have two boys who are almost 13 and 15 who keep us pretty active and on the go. Yeah. So um, in the winter, we like to snow ski, and in the summer, you'll find us wake surfing. Um, I also enjoy riding motorcycles. Um, I garden, I like to cook, and we um, like animals at my house a lot. Busy. Yes. Very, very active. It's like a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it should be at home. Um, so I'm going to read off all of your uh, accomplishments here. You earned a bachelor's degree in biology and neurobiology from Northwestern University. You went on to medical school at Loyola University, Chicago, and did your residency in neurological surgery at Indiana University School of Medicine in Indianapolis. When did you know you wanted to be a doctor, and why did you choose to specialize in neurosurgery? Well, um, I've always been pretty strong with math and science. Um, at Northwestern, I became interested in neurobiology um, to help put me through school. Um, I actually was working while I went to school there and uh, became interested in uh, my job at the laboratories in operating, but I soon discovered that I was actually a people person mm -hmm. too. So um, neurosurgery actually um, combines all of those interests with neuroscience operating and people. Um, so I did go to medical school with that goal in mind. Okay, interesting. Um, tell us a little bit about why you like being a physician, specifically here at Central Indiana Orthopedics. Yeah, um, so I've been at Central Indiana Orthopedics for 15 years. Um, it was my first job as a neurosurgeon oh. and I've stayed. And um, I first became interested in this job because I thought it was a very unique opportunity. It's pretty unusual for a neurosurgeon to be part of an orthopedic practice, um, but what it's allowed me to do is concentrate with um, my love of spine surgery, um, but also um, I soon discovered that it actually provides me the opportunity to give my patients more comprehensive care. So if oftentimes people with spine problems have orthopedic issues as well, and um, sometimes people come in to see me because they think they have a, ne a neck or a back problem mm -hmm. when they really have a shoulder or a hip problem. So it's nice to be able to care for my patients under one roof and um, be able to give them uh, more immediate care so that we can get them back to their usual activities. Um, the reason that I've stayed though, because it has been 15 years, is really the people. Um, I really enjoy working with all my partners. I think we get along very well. Um, we work together well. Um, and are really single-minded with the goal of the patient in mind. Um, what I've uh, loved the most, though, um, really are the patients. Yeah. Can you tell me about a specific patient or a situation that kind of exemplifies that kind of care that they're able to get from you and your partners? Yeah, um, so there are so many patients over the years that I've taken care of, and I really don't want to play favorites or anything. Um, Understandable. But there is a patient, Bill, um, who seems to stand out, and uh, part of the reason is I've actually cared for he and his wife um, since, really, I started here at Central Indiana Orthopedics. Um, so they've become like friends to me. Um, but Bill basically um, had some issues with his low back and um, he did um, seek some care elsewhere and um, basically was told that there was nothing that they could do for him. So um, when I was able to sit down, really listen to him and uh, try a few different things out, we were able to discover the solution. and. I think it has really made a big difference for him. 
Um, I take care of patients from all walks. So most of the patients are come to me because of word of mouth. These are patients who are might be part of a big motorcycle group. They may be part of a church. Um, there's lots of families that I take care of. Um, in fact, I just um, am still working with a woman who had uh, lumbar fusion surgery about a month ago, but she came all the way from Texas to oh, see wow. me. And she's been living here um, in Indiana, actually in an RV. Um, and it's all because her patient or her family told her, um, don't go anywhere else. Um, so That's that great. meant a lot to me. Yep. Um, and of course, uh, recently, um, there was a patient who I like to call Santa because he and his wife play <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Claus um, over the years for several years. And um, he had um, another surgery with me and came in and thanked me. And it meant a lot because he told me that the reason he was here is because of the trust that he had with me and our company. And um, that was just a really good feeling. That sounds really great, really rewarding. It is. Um, so do you get a lot of cross referrals between the motorcycle people and the church people, the church groups? <laughs> there can be some overlap, mm, but yeah, okay. it's just basically there's several different groups. There's even a coffee group of gentlemen who go to the feed store and they drink coffee in the morning, but they say they're working to basically hide out. <laughs> So Sounds good. Yeah, it's fun. You meet a lot of people. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Love it. So of these patients that you typically see, how do you determine if they need surgery or if they don't? So um, the decision making for having surgery, especially spine surgery, can be really complex. Um, but um, basically these patients have both neck or back pain and either arm or leg pain. Mm -hmm. um, really the goal here um, at Central Indiana Orthopedics is to try to get patients through without a surgery. So um, oftentimes they likely have tried therapy, chiropractic therapy, they may have even had um, injections. We have, um, we do have sports medicine physicians here and we actually have interventional pain management, so they may have come through those different avenues to get to me. So typically, um, the, we've exhausted all avenues besides surgery, um, and um, when uh, those patients come in, I try to go over everything and explain everything, give them any last options that I can think of, um, and then uh, sometimes we just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So nobody really probably wants to hear, hey, I've got to have surgery on my spine. But when it is necessary, how do you help them feel less anxious about it? And are there any technologies or that you use to help make it a better experience and have better outcomes for them? Okay, so um, this is going to be a long answer. Good, <laughs> I needed a, a coffee break, so <laughs> just, <laughs> just go for it. Um, so as far as the anxiety portion of things, um, I'm getting close to 50 myself here, so I've had several um, surgeries. So um, I understand that it can be a really nervous time. A lot of patients um, end up coming for surgery once they feel debilitated. They've um, stopped being as active as possible. Um, so with some of these patients, actually, um, they're losing sleep, they're gaining weight, they're sometimes even getting depressed because of all of that mm -hmm. and because maybe they can't provide for their families um, and um, do the things that they just want to do. So um, really, when a patient comes in to see me, there there's a whole lot of things to try to fit into 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, you know, practicing medicine is a lot different than when I started. But um, first, I, I try to listen um, because every patient has a story of their own. Right. Then um, we usually proceed to an exam because um, I want to form my own opinion about 
what I think they may have instead of what a picture may show or what a test may have shown. And then finally, we go over the um, test results. Um, and I try to explain in easy words for people to understand um, uh, what's going on. Um, and then again, explore the options. So if there's anything else um, that we can exhaust before surgery, then we may try that. Um, the um, a lot of patients do come in too because of um, social media and because of uh, the internet with ideas of what they think they have sure. or what somebody else has told them about something. So I think another part of the success of what I do here is just that I try to keep that patient as with as much autonomy as possible. So if they're involved in the decision-making process and doing things that they actually think will be helpful, then their outcome will be much more successful. Um, so um, as far as technology goes, um, that's the other part of the question. Yep. Um, all the places that I work um, have what's called an O-arm, uh, which is basically a machine that's used in the operating room. Um, our Fisher's location actually has the newest version of this technology in the city, so um, that's really nice for me. Yeah. Um, but basically what an O-arm um, is, is it's a machine um, that can come in and take a thousand different x-ray pictures within minutes and then it collimates it into a three-dimensional CAT scan that I can see right away. Um, that then gets registered into this different system so that when I'm operating and placing hardware <coughs> such as um, screws and rods or um, implants, um, then I can actually see in real time where that's going um, and um, that's going to basically increase patient safety because um, not only is the hardware going into a strong portion of the bone, but um, also we're, uh, you know, we, my team and me are um, avoiding nerve injury. Um, so that is most often used in lumbar fusion surgeries. The spine is really flexible, so when a patient is on my operating room table having surgery done, things can shift. Um, and so it's one of those things that I use right before the hardware is going to be going in so that we have the most accurate data for use. Um, another piece of technology, which is not exactly new, but not a lot of people know about, um, is disc arthroplasty, or um, basically artificial discs or mobile discs. Mm. These are most often used in the neck, and here's an example of um, one of the uh, implant models. So. What you're seeing here is basically a model of the cervical spine. So this lucite here is meant to represent the bones or the vertebral bodies of the cervical spine. Um, with patients who typically have um, neck pain and arm pain, it's because a nerve or the spinal cord is being compressed. And so their body registers it as pain or numbness or dysfunction. Um, and again, since it's the neck, then usually arms are involved. So most of the surgeries that are done for that particular issue are from actually the front of the spine. Um, but to, in order to get to the problem, the whole disc, which is between the vertebrae, comes out, but then we need to put something in there. Mm -hmm. So um, the most common method and the oldest method is to put a spacer with bone graft and maybe a plate and tiny screws. That's a fusion surgery. But what a disc arthroplasty is, is instead of a fusion, it actually um, allows for mobility. So you can kind of see that this implant can uh, move and rock back, back and forth. But 
basically this particular brand um, has uh, two plates, so it's very simple. Um, and then there's um, a ball cup mechanism. Um, patients who have had this procedure done typically are young, um, single level, and usually C4-5 and C5-6. Um, it's particularly useful for laborers or people that want to stay active because these patients just seem to feel better sooner, um, but also um, because we don't have to grow bone, the healing rate um, for this is faster, so they're getting back to their usual activities and um, less restrictions sooner. Wow, that's amazing. And for people out there watching who are um, maybe a little on the slower side like me, um, this whole thing does not go into the body. It's just the little pieces in the middle and the keychain looking thing also does not go inside a human body. But <laughs> I had to ask just to make right, sure. Right. Um, so with these technologies, are people seeing faster recovery times than, than they did 10 years ago or before that or? I think so. So um, there's been a move um, just in general of what we call minimally invasive surgery. So basically what that's come down to, because it means lots of different things uh, to lots of different surgeons, is uh, smaller incisions, less tissue manipulation, um, and um, stronger, better hardware mm -hmm. that may, might be placed, um, and also technologies to get bone to grow faster and stronger. So all of these things combined basically mean that the patients hopefully will be in less pain. Yeah. Um, they'll have shorter hospital stays, if not outpatient, um, and um, basically get back to their life as quickly as possible, and I think sooner and better. Yeah. So I think I, I see personally a difference in um, the um, way patients seem to come through things 15 years ago versus just even the past couple years. Yeah, I It's would, very different. I would think so. Um, w we touched earlier on um, how Central Indiana Orthopedics um, is a great place that, that you love because of the community and patient care and the camaraderie. Um, but how do you think that um, it differs than other orthopedic practices? So I think, um, I'm not, a, I'm not a native of Indiana, um, but I came here in 1997 and obviously I didn't leave. Um, so I think Central Indiana Orthopedics really um, encompasses um, what I've come to term Hoosier values. Mm -hmm. um, so really we're a group of surgeons and sports medicine physicians and physiatrists and um, pain management um, people who have come together under one roof with the goal of um, helping people get back to their usual activities because again that's going to create health and happiness mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know create a um, productive society as a whole. Um, we again have that motto because life moves um, and really I think that we all actually work together well, we enjoy each other, in fact I, you may find me socializing with some of my partners, um, but it's very nice for me to be able to just, especially as a neurosurgeon in an orthopedic practice, um, it's really nice for me to be able just to walk down the hall or make a phone call or, um, you know, ask somebody after hours about a patient that we share um, because oftentimes um, it may be more complex than just a single problem. I think we take care of patients from head to toe. We take care of you, we take care of your children, we take care of your grandparents. This is very much of a family and friend oriented sort of place and we like people to feel welcome and that we're going to give them, you know, the time that they need um, in this, you know, differing 
world of medicine where things are fast and it gets all confusing. Yeah. So. Well, it's great to talk to somebody who obviously loves what they do and loves doing it at the place that, where you're at. Um, we're going to wrap up here, but um, if you have a few extra minutes after the interview, I got this pain right back here <laughs> in my neck, and it kind of goes down my arm. Mm -hmm. And I'd be happy to help. Okay, that'd be <laughs> awesome. We really want to thank you today for taking the time to oh. share your insights and your expertise and Thanks. your 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 how you take care of patients here. Thanks. Um, Thanks to our audience also for listening in. We appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate this opportunity because, you know, this is what I'm about and it's very um, helpful, I think, for patients to actually get a chance to see me and hear me and, you know, that, that may actually make them feel like maybe I can help. Yep. Well, thank you again for uh, watching. You can learn more about Dr. Tecula's work and the other expert physicians and providers here at Central Indiana Orthopedics at ciocenter.com. Thanks again for watching and have a great injury-free day.